Section 10.6 is the next area we're going to consider application of phasers. Now, in this series of slides, we're going to assume that the time dependence in all the equations is some constant you don't care about because it would cancel all the way through times exponential of j omega t, e to the j omega t. So anytime you have a derivative, time derivative, j omega pops down, and a second derivative, j omega squared, which is minus omega squared. So that means every time derivative is going to be replaced by an algebraic power of omega, and then of course the e to the j omega t will cancel out all the way across the equations. Let's apply this on the next slide. So previously we had hb5 at 8, 5 and 8, and then now we didn't do this before, we combine the equations by doing the right differentiations, and we've done that before, and we get number 11. And you can see it has three terms, lc times second derivative plus something times first derivative plus something with no derivatives. If there was no damping resistance conductance in the system, then the last two terms in 11 would disappear, and then we would have our classical wave equation that we saw earlier, second derivative in z proportional to second derivative in t, with lc being 1 over the velocity squared. Now, if we look at the application of phasers to all this, every derivative gets replaced by the appropriate power. So right here, we see omega squared, and it's multiplying LC times Vs, and the first time derivative replaced by J omega, and of course nothing going on here. And what I want to point out is that you can actually uh, factor this expression out. So you can see that there's a cross term here, and we'll see it in the first uh, line of the following slide in a moment, that you can factor this whole expression as the product of two uh, terms. So let's go to the next slide to see that. And you can see the factorization, that's number 40. And you can see that the z is impedance, that's all per unit length, and this is the complex admittance. So this is the shunt part, that's the series impedance part, and the product is equal to, we're going to call that gamma squared. So gamma in the next line is the square root of that thing, which in short form is square root of zy, and it's a complex number in general. Well, we're going to look a little bit at the interpretation of alpha and beta. We've seen beta before. It's actually the wave number. And in the case where there is no uh, resistance, R, or conductance, G, then alpha is zero, and beta is exactly what we called K in our introduction lecture. Well, the solution of 40, simple exponentials, e to the plus or minus gamma z, and the first term has got an amplitude v naught plus times exponential e to the minus gamma z, so that's a wave traveling to the right or down or towards the load, and this is the wave reflected back, and we have the same for the current as shown here. Now what we can do is look at this in more detail in the following slide. Let's apply it. We can, from before, create the phasor equivalent equations of the ones we first looked at when we used KCL and KVL and eliminate the time dependencies and we get this pair of equations. Now, 
We know the solution, so let's plug in the voltage solution on this side and the current solution on that side, and you get straightforwardly that, just the appropriate either plus or minus gamma pops down. What we'd like to do is look at the ratio, for example, supposing there was no V minus and I minus wave, what would it look like? And so let's do that. I'll do it quickly here. We can have uh, minus gamma V naught plus, and that multiplies E to the minus gamma Z, and that's equal to minus Z times I, I naught plus. Now, what, what exactly is this? Well, this is the Z we saw up top, but the ratio is what's important. So the ratio of the forward traveling voltage amplitude, it could be complex, to the forward traveling current is going to be the ratio, we can do the simple algebra, V0 plus over I0 plus, is equal to, so V over I is equal to Z over gamma, the minus signs canceling out. So this is the ratio of voltage to current in terms of the amplitude, and that we called the characteristic impedance. That's equal to Z naught the characteristic impedance. So in the next slide, we will look at what this all means, apply that in detail, and I've just done the hard work explaining how you get number 46. So we have uh, Z over gamma, which we just showed, and then we substitute in gamma was the square root of the impedance times the admittance per unit length, and then one of the square roots is Z cancels out, and we get this classic result. Using the previous results for Z, which was R plus J omega L, um, for Z, not Z naught, and for the admittance, Y, G plus J omega C. So if you think of it as like series impedance and shunt admittance, their ratio square rooted then gives us the final result, Z naught. So now we know gamma, we know the propagation, we know the frequency, we know the characteristic impedance, and that means we know everything about the transmission line to do some calculations. And now we can go forward, look at some approximations, calculate power, that's really important, that goes down the transmission line, and then we'll go to applications.